Well, guys, after many failed attempts, is the Deuce finally the successful 70s show we have all been hoping for? Let's find out. Don't change the channel! Hey guys, it's Cameron for the series premiere of The Deuce. And what this show is essentially about is we we center on uh, 1970s Times Square. Basically, the drug epidemic is really worsening here. And there are these two brothers, Vincent and Frankie Martino, who basically, they are uh, fronts for the mob. They're working for them while they're also operating out of Times Square. And it's also the home of this sex worker, Candy, who eventually turns to the legal emerging porn industry. But basically, when it comes to the Deuce guys, uh, you guys know I was very much looking forward to the show. Two reasons. One, HBO, two, George Pelicanos and uh, David Simon. You throw those two names together. I mean, HBO, I've said it so many times, and I'll say it again. Ever since the night of, HBO's just been so consistent. They've had hit after hit. Uh, nothing's really failed for them at all. Uh, the only failure I can think of is really vinyl, but ever since the night of, they've just been so consistent, and I was really hoping the deuce would not, you know, uh, butcher that by any means. It would not stop that really amazing track record they've been having, because there have been so many networks now, they're trying to get these really great 70s shows, and they just don't find an audience at all. You know, vinyl really didn't work. I'm Dying Up Here was just a snooze fest. I couldn't even get through the second episode. I fell asleep. It was so boring. Um, and I was really hoping the deuce could maybe be that show finally, and I have to say that I know this is just the first episode, but I think this may be it. I really think that this may be the big hit for HBO. I really enjoyed this first episode. It's not at all about uh, what I just described, mainly because this episode's more about getting to know the characters, and it was also very long. So, uh, because of the interest of time, guys, I'm not going to talk about every single thing that happened in this episode, mainly because I feel like a lot of it's going to end up being kind of unreal related to the plot in general, because I heard that's kind of the way David Simon likes to uh, make his shows, but we're just going to answer right now, starting off with the cast. And I have to say, the cast is one of the things that really did draw me in here. I mean, this is a cast of just very talented actors and actresses, and I think they really did give it their all. We first have to talk about James Franco as uh, the titular duo of Vincent and Frankie Martino. Yeah, they're basically going Fargo here. He's playing double duty, and I know a lot of people uh, don't think James Franco's the greatest actor. I've never really understood it. I've always really liked the guy. I think he's great in pretty much anything I've seen him in, uh, but he did a really good job here. I really did like both of these characters. You know, Vincent Martino, he is, uh, you know, a dad. He's He's got two kids and a wife, and he's also, you know, working in this bar, and you can tell that he's just trying to do what he can to, you know, pay for his kids and things like that. However, his brother Frankie is a little bit more shady. He definitely has some shady dealings going on in terms of gambling and things like that, and it's too soon to tell if he's, like, perfect in this role or anything, but he definitely did a really great job from what I saw. He really did transform to this character very well. Uh, my only real complaint is that I really could not tell that much of the distinction between Vincent and Frankie. They just seemed... I, I understood, like, who the characters were, but it was hard to tell, like, who was who here. But Franco really did do a good job of what he had here. I think he's honestly going to get better and better as he goes on. And I really did uh, at least get intrigued by these characters. I really did like what we got with him. I thought overall he definitely did a very good job. And I'm looking forward to seeing where he does go uh, throughout the rest of the series. However, for me, the absolute standout of this first episode I don't know if she's going to be a stand on this entire show, but at least this first episode is Maggie Gyllenhaal as this character of Candy Merrill. Because on the surface, Candy is just your typical sex worker. You know, she is a prostitute who, you know, she goes to different clients and things like that, and that's basically her life. However, she does not look at prostitution in the way you would think. This is not someone 
who is, you know, begging for things, and, you know, she's not trying to put on any sort of act. No, she's very straightforward. You know, she's not a bad person by any means, but she just looks at it in a much more business type of sense. Like, this is something she's doing strictly for money, and that's something I really did love about her character, especially the scene where um, she was with that one client who you could tell was a little bit apprehensive about all this. I don't know if he never touched a girl before or anything like that, um, but it was a very interesting scene the way that was played. You could tell that she was just very straightforward. She's like, look, you only get one pay, and she's clearly just interested in the money, and I'm definitely very interested in getting into her character, because as we saw, she does have a whole life of her own, you know, she's got kids, she has, um, you know, a mother, I mean, you know, Candy is just her surname, you know, Eileen Mer uh, Merrill is her actual identity, and we didn't get to see, like, a ton of Irene Merrill in this first episode, but I really did love what we got with her, you can tell that she's very experienced this industry, she's been in it for a very long time, and out of all the characters, like I said, she is the one that I'm definitely most intrigued by, I really love what we got Maggie Gyllenhaal, I think she absolutely killed it in this role, and I can't wait to see where she goes uh, throughout the rest of this show. And the other two characters I really do want to talk about here is uh, Jibenga Akinabaji, sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, and uh, Gary Carr as both Larry Brown and Cece. And these two characters are both very interesting because... Yes, they are uh, both pimps, but they both have very different ways of doing it. You know, CC he um, gives a little bit more leeway to some of his clients. You know, if maybe they have a problem or something or they can't pay him a certain amount of money, he's okay with it. He's like, all right, just give me this much. You know, he's very focused on that. Larry Brown, however, is extremely demanding. You know, he, no, you must give me the certain pay of money, and if he don't, he might physically harm them and things like that. But as we saw, they both do have uh, similarities, because we did see at the end of the episode, CC does have this really violent sort of rage in him. We don't know exactly what his client actually did or what exactly happened with her. Um, and then Larry Brown, he does have these moments of, you know, a little bit more lightness in him. And I really did like that about these two characters, showing how they may seem very different, but they actually are very similar. And I definitely did like seeing as how different uh, their two kind of philosophies were when it came through going through the porn, you know, going as uh, as these pimps. I thought was definitely very interesting. And then all the other characters I don't really have a ton to say about, mainly because, um... A lot of the characters that were here were shown either as, you know, as they are, as, like, they're prostitutes, or, uh, like, briefly in a scene. I really like Dominique Fishback as Darlene. I really liked her character. You know, she's a very sweet and, uh, just, uh, a very sweet, good-natured prostitute, but you can tell that, again, Larry Brown is actually her pimp, and he's very demanding and violent, so I'm very interested in seeing where she's gonna go, but I'm also kind of scared for her, especially what we've seen him do already. Uh, as well as Margaret uh, Laviva's character, Abby, you know that something's going to happen between her and Vincent. They already kind of started something, so you know something's going to happen there. And then Emily Mead is Laurie. Very happy to see, you know, fellow uh, Leftovers veteran. You know, I always love seeing uh, Leftovers actors doing other stuff, but she was fantastic here. I really did like her character as well. Really, everyone did a fantastic job. There really isn't anyone that I'm saying, oh, they're not great in this show. They're not doing a good job. I think everyone honestly gave a really good performance. And that's something that definitely does benefit this show. Now I do want to get more into the directing and the writing because that is something that, again, really did hook me in here. Uh, the directing here, I think, is great. What I really love about the directing of the show is that it's very honest. It's not trying to sugarcoat anything. It's not trying to hide anything. It's showing you very well what Times Square was like in the 70s. I mean, on the surface, Times Square is one of the most beautiful places you could go, you know, all these bright lights, all these, you know, places to go, all these things to do, but it also was very dangerous at the time, I mean, there were pimps, there were gangs, I mean, the first scene, as we know, Vincent's mugged, I mean, it's really not that safe of an area, and I did like that they really did show um, how dangerous this actually really was, and the sort of, you know, treacherous nature that all the characters really do go through, I definitely did like that, and it was just very harsh, but it was harsh in a way that David Simon wants me. Because, I mean, this is the guy who did The Wire, which 
full disclosure, I actually have not seen The Wire. I know, how can I be a TV fan and call myself that? Uh, the Wire was on when I was far, I was far too young when The Wire was on. Maybe I'll binge it at some point, but when you got like 15 other shows to watch, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to fit The Wire in there. I will eventually watch it. Don't, don't you worry. I will eventually get to it. It's like on my top shows to binge, like when I have nothing to do. One day I will binge The Wire. I don't know when that's gonna be, but I will eventually do that. Uh, but I will say that this show, you know, uh, David Simon, I can already see why he is credited as one of the best, like, TV writers, um, working today, because he really did write this show to perfection. I mean, every character here felt very fleshed out. It didn't really feel like any character, um, was underused or anything. Sure, there were some characters that he didn't use here, but what I really loved about this first episode, like I said, is that it really doesn't start the plot here. This episode's more getting into these characters. It's getting to know their lives, getting to know the situation they're in, which, again, I am not, um... You know, that, that does not, um, the, the re, the whole them not, you know, uh, starting the actual plots. That's not, um, putting a downer on the show at all. I'm not, I'm definitely not doing that. I am not at all, um, saying that the show did a bad job. I think it actually did benefit the show in them doing that. And I think, you know, yeah, I mean, it was an hour and a half they went for it. And I think by episode three, that's probably when we're going to start to get, uh, some semblance of a plot. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I like what we really did get here. And even though, no, it didn't focus on the actual plot, it was very focused. It focused on the drug epidemic. It focused on real estate stuff. And it focus on what sex, sex workers really go through. And that's something else I really did love, is that the show really is um, putting you into perspective of, like, if you were a prostitute, what would you do? If you were a pimp, what would you do? I mean, these are jobs that, no, no one ever wants, but there are people like that out there, and they do have very significant ways of thinking, and I thought the show really did get into all that very well. I was very impressed um, with the way that was done here, and again, it doesn't seem like he's trying to sugarcoat anything, and that's something I definitely really did enjoy. Also, the 70s period, they really are using to their advantage here. I'm Dying Up Here didn't use this at all. I mean, it could have been set anywhere and, you know, it would have been fine. I'm Dying Up Here, you couldn't even tell it was really a 70s show. They just had, like, 70s clothing and things like that. Vinyl kind of did, but this show really seems like it's utilizing its 70s setting to its full potential, and I'm very happy about that. I think they're definitely using that very well, and I'm looking forward to seeing really where all that's gonna go. Um, the cinematography here as well is fantastic. I mean, the interesting thing about the show is that it's not actually filmed in Times Square. George Pelicanos, uh, I was watching a behind-the-scenes thing, and he said that, unfortunately, Times Square does not look like that anymore. So they had to go somewhere else, and the way they were able to kind of recreate that uh, and not actually be in Times Square but make it look so similar to Times Square just really shows how much effort was put into the show, and that's something I absolutely love. I mean, you can tell when a TV show has a lot of effort put into it, and you can tell this is definitely one that they did definitely put a lot into, and I'm definitely very happy about that. I really did love, um, the way this show, you know, the, the look of this show, all of that definitely looks perfect, and I was very impressed with that. The score as well, lots of great 70s music, things like that, definitely really did enjoy that. And then the editing, uh, really, like I said, this episode was an hour and a half long, didn't need to be that long, yes, I really do think so, I mean, there's a lot of characters here, there's a lot of stuff going on with them, and I was perfectly fine with that. Like I said, really my only complaints with this show, if I really did have to have one, are the characters of Vincent Martino and Frankie Martino. Now, Vincent Martino, I was very compelled by. His character, like I said, he's in a bunch of, you know, his brothers in shady dealings and things like that. But getting to know these two, telling them apart, I think is going to be a bit of a hassle. I think eventually, I'm going to be able to be like, all right, this is Vincent, this is Frankie. But in this first episode, it was very hard to tell these two apart. And, uh... You know, I, I don't think that... On Fargo, it was like, holy shit, how did Ian McGregor play both these characters? Here, it just looks like James Franco, just one of them's wearing a black suit, one of them's wearing a white suit, and I feel like they need to kind of change up their appearance a little bit, just so we can make the distinction of, yeah, this is what's going on in Vincent's, this is what's going on in Frankie's. And I'm hoping, again, that that's going to be easier to tell, um 
than it is in this first episode. But right now, it was very hard to make that distinction. And again, James Franco did do a really good job, but I feel like they could have done a lot more with, with Frankie's character specifically. Not a lot with him in this first episode, a lot more with Vincent than there was with Frankie. And again, maybe that's because we didn't see a lot of Frankie, that that's why it didn't really work out as well for me. I think as the show goes on, like I said, I'm going to be able to make that contrast better. But right now, uh, it's it's hard to tell the difference between the two, and I am hoping that gets easier to do as the show goes on. And like I said as well, just the different sort of philosophies of some of these clients. I mean, as we saw, some of them just like went straight for it. They just had sex and that was it. They gave them the money. But then you had characters like that one guy who was with Darlene, and he didn't even want to have sex with her. He just wanted to watch movies and eat popcorn and... I don't know if there actually was someone like that, but that just seems so real. Like, he wasn't actually into the whole idea of sex because he just saw someone who he just kind of wanted to, you know, just watch movies with, and that was kind of it. And I thought that was definitely very interesting, the way that was done. It just really showed that not all of their clients were the same. You know, clients come in all different shapes and sizes, and I definitely thought that was just very well portrayed here, and that was something I think really did benefit the show very well. Well, like I said, guys, I, for the most part, really did love this first episode. I think they have a lot going for them. Uh, like I said, the budget, uh, the characters, just very expertly crafted. I was very impressed with the way this first episode really did turn out. I really don't have many complaints at all, honestly. I was just really happy with the way this turned out. Uh, besides, like I said, that one thing with James Franco. Other than that, guys, I really did love this first episode. Again, not entirely sure where the plot's going to go, not entirely sure where all all these characters are going to go, but I'm completely fine with that. I think it's better to, you know, um, start something out slow and not have a ton going on rather than be like vinyl and have like 15 things going on and have only like five of them actually be interesting. So I'm glad to see the show is actually taking its time with that. I overall definitely did enjoy this first episode. I think this is definitely something that is going to be very successful for HBO. And I'm definitely going to give the first episode of the deuce, um, season one, episode one the pilots in a minus so over guys maybe the first episode of the deuce let me know what you guys thought this episode overall left your thoughts in it did you like it did you not like it do you think this is going to be a big hit for hbo uh i'm pretty sure it will be i'm already hearing amazing things about it so and by the way guys from here on out episode two i will review like every episode and i'll talk about everything that happened it's just this episode there was so much going on and things like that that one i didn't have time to write a recap too i just wanted to um you know watch it and review it to you guys and then uh episode two from there on out i will in fact um you know talk about everything that happens from there but that's my review hope you guys enjoy it we'll see you guys in my next video and i will see you guys for that okay bye